In the last episode, we uncovered the precise locations of the Dwarf Tribe's dwellings in the Atlas and Anti-Atlas mountain ranges. The 1891 book, The Dwarfs of Mount Atlas, provided us with a fascinating list of place names, many of which can still be found on Google Maps today. Aka, once called Vaca, was the most frequently mentioned settlement, and we dropped a pin on its exact location. Adventurers and researchers alike now have a roadmap to follow in hopes of uncovering traces of this lost civilization. These dwarf tribes lived in and around places like Aka, the Draw Valley, and the Bonnie Mountains, often building their homes in secluded hard-to-reach areas, such as near the mountains southeast of the Drow River. Intriguingly, the dwarves were also known for guarding treasures from lost civilizations. The Draw Valley, rich in history, was said to hold the remnants of ancient cities like Tapunt, now known as Tabout. We also discovered that the dwarves were master acrobats and skilled adobe builders, perhaps explaining a link to modern adobe acrobat. Anyway, this is part 3 of the series, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos. The links are in the description. I recommend watching them all to get the full picture. I hope you don't get bored. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Accounts on their religion differ. They were known as Muslims, Christians, and idol-worshipping pagans. Some were said to be half-Christians, mixing their magic spells and idols with reading and following the Gospels. It is possible that their Muslim and Christian allegiances were fronts for the public, but some appeared to be genuine. The idol of their worship was called Daidu, another name for Osiris, one of the oldest Egyptian gods. Many towns south of the Atlas Mountains use the word in their town and river names. There's the district of Did or Didan, the towns eight Didi, Didi, eight Hedidu, and eight Dadan. There is a river named Did and another named Daidu or Dora in the Black Mountains near Tinzon. In the Atlas Mountains, Dido Osiris is called Dido Isiri. Strangely enough, a mountain rumored to harbor dwarves is called Mountain of the Christians or Jebel El Nazara. Christians were called Nazara, the Nazarenes. Near the bottom of that mountain is a town called Tascadir. And near Tascadir is another mountain called Ben Tuhad. This is where purely Christian dwarves called Imini were said to live, possibly named after the river Imini. I found none of these places on maps, but knowing that Nazara was close to Aka, I found the town Tascala perched between two mountains. Many people experienced the dwarves as secretive, secluded, not revealing all they know. They were also known to be frightened and distrustful of white Europeans. They would not go to hotel rooms with them, would often not allow to be touched by them, would not show up to arranged meetings, etc. Some reports differentiated between the Zenigar tribes and other dwarves. The Zenigar were viewed less favorably than others. The word seems to derive from the Arabic and Hebrew word for copper rust or scum. The dwarves were copper miners, so that could make sense. The Zenigar were said to ritualistically sacrifice sheep. The dwarves fear the evil eye, a belief that is still common today in North African countries. They were known as money finders and would sometimes find money for other people as a service. To do so, they wrote on a wooden slate. The book says nothing further on this, but I assume it's a kind of divination practice as the dwarves worldwide were very much into divination. Many reported that the dwarves, when traveling in the desert, wore a hike or kanif or burnous with a large yellow eye or all-seeing eye on it. The eye was normally around one yard in length. A burnous is a cape worn by desert people. In Muslim culture, the single eye has a negative connotation, perhaps another reason the dwarves were secluded. One of their techniques of keeping secrets was to mix up words in their language putting the end of words first so nobody can understand them. The dwarves themselves warned people not to talk about them, almost as if they didn't want to be found or as if they knew they were being hunted. On the other hand, the Moors were also very fond of or superstitious about the specialness or sacredness of the dwarves, calling them blessed and considering their presence good luck. Was this good self-marketing from the dwarves or is there more to it? I don't know but it was considered bad luck to talk about them. 
A taboo was placed on it by Moors and Berbers alike. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. Thank you. The Dwarves of Morocco had a reputation for knowing the stars well. I assume this relates to astrology, but it could also relate to something of their religion. They were said to make little books which are carried around as charms or placed in water. These books were said to be able to cure ills. More is not said in the book, but it's a common ancient belief among indigenous people that water can carry information, because it actually can. Their old language is called Tagnawat or Mizjidin, also Hida, Haida, and Tinker. I'm sure if I dwell on it for a few hours I'd figure out what these words mean. Their demise could have also been self-imposed. They were known to fight each other, tribe to tribe, using poison arrows and firearms. We don't know. To me, it's amazing that an entire ethnicity can just disappear and people aren't just a little more curious about it. The book says that skeletons of the little people from Morocco were sent to the Royal Society. If that is so, the Royal Society has failed to inform the public. I learned in school, in the early 1980s, that dwarf races were a thing of fairy tales. They were mythic. But not so. Their race was flesh and blood real, and we found their dwellings with tiny doors, their small skeletons, and much more. It would be interesting to find out how they came to exist, where they disappeared to, why they were so frightened, and where the cities are buried. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.